okay? Yeah? Okay, I'm getting a few nods, which is fantastic. Phil, don't take any photos yet, I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, as Rick mentioned, my name is Padma. My Twitter handle is the underscore Padma. So if anything is of interest tonight to you, uh, I usually tweet about similar topics. Um, it's either that or doggos and a few cattos as well. So <laughs> great content. <laughs> Anywho, I suppose, um, yeah, a little bit about me. I have had quite uh, a few years of, an, you know, assorted array of um, roles in my past. Uh, I've been part of running a digital agency for about over a decade. Oh, I'm from Perth, by the way, which is why I might be a little something something but yeah it's 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 a Perth thing. Um, it's not. It's not. It's just me. Uh, uh, last year. Um, I was the head of product and design at Seven West Media, um, so that was a really uh, amazing, interesting year for me. And this year, I've just started as the GM at Pet Rescue. Um, so I can I can have a chat to you all after at any point in time if you'd like to have a chat about what that role actually entails, because I'm using a lot of my design and development and tech skills um, day to day, uh, but then also my my bossy, uh, super organised skill set as well. So that's just happening. Totally recommend doing GMing. It's fun. Anyway, sorry. Tonight I want to chat to you about doing the good stuff. Um, you know, what's the good stuff you might ask? I'm, I'm glad you asked. Are you asking? You're asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the good stuff? Uh, right, so the good stuff, um, we might talk a little bit about accessibility, inclusive design, ethical design. I'm seeing a few nods in the audience, which is great. Security, privacy, performance, work-life balance, PD training, wellness, remote working, inclusion, flexibility, uh, just to name a few of the things in the, in the good stuff space, right? Um, so we hear a lot about this like these kind of conversations and these areas. But what we don't really hear about is enough, in my opinion, um, is I suppose the outputs of those, like the real great success stories that we're hearing day to day in our workflows. Um, it almost seems like it's an add-on um, at various points. So what I mean by that is I've gone into some, you know, several roles being from as I mentioned, from an agency background where you have the constraints of timelines and budgets, um, you know, and client expectations as well. So actually baking in all of these great things that improve so much from experience through to output, through to actually the, the, the benefit of, you know, our, what our footprint is, that stuff is really hard to have the conversation with when you have or have a conversation about when you're in that kind of constraint, whether it's budget or timeline. And then also revenue. If revenue ever comes up as a conversation as a blocker, that's, you know, that that is, that's not so rare. Um, that, that happens all of the time. So my question is, and this is what I want to, I suppose, pose as the, as the conversation to have with you all tonight, is what stops us from doing the good stuff? Um, so I'm going to try something a little different tonight. I'm going to ask you, rather than to put your hands up, to give me a collective hmm, if you agree um, with any of these statements or if you've come across them in the past. And I really want you to, if, if you have, just really give it some hmm, okay? All right, so if you've ever been in a situation of trying to pose a, you know, let's do some good stuff and you've, you know, let's do this good thing and then you've come across this response. <laughs> it's not part of MVP. Can I get a hmm? Hmm, hmm, yeah. Okay, what about getting this response? It's a nice to have. Hmm, hmm. <laughs> There's no budget. Mm. Oh, what about this one? Yes, we should do this. There's, uh, uh, yeah, there's, there's hmms. But it's not a priority yet. Mm. <laughs> yes, so about this talk. Um, essentially what I want to go through is less about making the specific case for these things because collectively in the room, I know you know that we all know that this is the good stuff and we fight for it because we know that that is going to 
benefit our industry. It's going to benefit the products that we work, in, work on and the work that we're doing, all right? So we take pride in these things. But what I really want to take you through tonight is about potentially building up the case for it. How do you convince the stakeholders? How do you convince the, the decision makers in the room um, to embark on it and use it as a priority rather than saying, we should totally do this, but, you know, reasons X, Y, Z. So let's go through a recipe for success. I love my analogies. I love to cook. I love food. So it's all things and just, you know, let's go on a tasty talk together. That's a weird thing to say. I did mention I'm from Perth, right? So, <laughs> oh. all right. And I also mentioned that I'm from Pet Rescue, right? So um, for those, <laughs> those in the room, this is a, a cute photo of, of Doggo with a chef, chef's hat. Um, and the caption says, time to make some waffles. Get it? It's great. <laughs> so great. Anywho, I lost my thought. And that will happen when you put up cute doggo photos. Ingredients. Okay, let's put together some ingredients, right? Um, what, what do you need to really make this case? A cup of patience, two cups of determination, some resilience, evidence, support, and a pinch of AI, emotional intelligence. Um kind of combine these things. So these are, you know, I suppose these are the, the soft skill sets that one might want to equip going into this kind of battle because we're going at a cooking war here, people. Preparation. There's only five steps involved. Um, the first few are really straightforward and then the rest we might want to deep, deep dive a bit further into how we might convince and persuade those around us. All right, so preparation, five steps I mentioned. Gather evidence raise awareness, build community, align with your values and company values, and know your audience. Right, so sounds straightforward, right? Um, it sounds pretty reasonable to do these things to be able to make a case or put, put forward and present a case. Uh, again, let's, let's reel it back. We're talking about accessibility. We're talking about inclusive design. We're talking about professional development. Any, like any of these areas where we might want to dive into performance, security, these conversations, I believe that these are the things that you need to prepare to actually make a meaningful case um, to persuade the right people in the room. So. Let's talk about gathering evidence. Um, you know, there's, there's an abundance of data that we have access to at our fingertips. We can get qualitative data, quantitative. There's plenty of research all around. We just have to search for it. And I've, I've put in a point there of being conscious about your why. <laughs> and why this is important is sometimes the reason behind you embarking on one of these you know, one of these missions, one of these, uh, one of these not fights, but um, challenges, is it might just be that that's something that you want as a skill set that you might not have under your belt. Maybe you've never built a design system before and that's something that would be really, really great for the portfolio. No judgment here. That's fine. That's cool. But be really realistic about it, right? So you've got your, your bias that you might be adding in into that play. So that's, a, uh, that's an incentive as to why you're proceeding with it. But then there's a lot of evidence that you can actually bring along to the party to support making this a really great muffin. Again, really random. I don't know why I do this. Okay. <laughs> so steps two and three. Really self-explanatory here, so I did. I wanted to just quickly um, go through them. It's raising awareness and building a community. So raising awareness because not everyone knows what you know. Not everyone is completely immersed in either you know your design space or your development space or your day to day or your customer service roles. You know, there's it's. It's really about bringing people on board and up to speed with where you're at. And that's not to say that it's, you know, a, a patronising conversation of a, well, you don't know this. It's more a bring them along on the journey because with when, when it comes time for you making the case and you have the support behind you, that's really going to be much louder than you just going in and going, this is so important, we should totally make the website faster because... If people don't know why, if people don't have buy into that, you're not going to have that team support that's actually going to rally the right people around you. So it is about building community. It is about building um, the perfect band cover of support <laughs> behind you. Um, 
And here's a tweetable quote for you from yours truly. You don't know what you don't know, so don't assume that people know what you know. You know? <laughs> it's completely what I'd say. Um, and it was what I said in a talk. It's probably being recorded. Cool. <laughs> On to uh, preparation method number four out of five, knowing your values. Um, now, this one is one that I'd like to go through in a bit of, bit of detail. It's not just about knowing your own values um, and your purpose uh, and the things that are important to you, but also what your company values. Okay, so let's run through this. Knowing why your product exists or, you know, what you're working on, why does it exist and who is it actually for? Who's this target audience that we are trying to reach and benefit through using said product? What are your team's pillars? Has everyone actually, um, if I can get a bit of a, a hmm um, from those in the room who have done a values workshop or a value session within your team? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, okay, not, not that many. Do you, okay, what about the, what about a hmm for those who know your company's values? Um, like you could rattle them off right now. Can I get a hmm? Hmm? Okay. Um, who would like, who of those hmms would like to just yell out a couple of the values that you might have? Integrity. Okay, cool. Be fearless. Be fearless. Okay, awesome. Any others? Pardon? Stay, stay curious? Okay, rad. All right. These, um, these, these values are what you can potentially rally around to build your case, to align with a pillar of whether it's quality, integrity, trust, be fearless, um, you know, be courageous, have the, yeah, integrity, I said that. But it also speaks to, as a team, what is the standard that you accept? Um, there's that saying that we hear about all the time, which is the standard your past is the standard that you accept. So being building up your team values and actually rallying behind them is so important to actually determining what kind of work goes onto the roadmap. What is the work that we are all tracking towards to achieve these outcomes for the team, for the company, um, and, you know, what are the outcomes there? So when we're building a case for something, rallying around your company values, if you believe in them, you have to actually believe in them, and if, if you don't believe in them, then I'd be asking a side step of why. Um, but, you know, that's it's really important if you're wanting to build a case to actually align it to what is important to your company. And this leads to that purpose-driven work piece, um, and, you know, what you're doing and why you're actually doing it in the first place. Um, you know, you're spending, well, for those who are working full time, you're spending a lot of hours there at this organisation or this business that you're working on or working in. Do you believe in it? Um, I hope so, because that's a lot of time that you're spending there and, you know, your, your energy is all going towards that. Um, so as an example, Dropbox have trust as one of their, one of their values in their company. Um, and through trust... The conversations begin within their teams, um, talking about security, compliance, privacy. These are the way we can actually pull in those, you know, those con convincing and persuading conversations to go, okay, well, let's rally around. These are our company values and how might we actually position the product and the tech to go along in the lines of how do we build trust? Well, we need, a, you know, we need security. Um, we can't F around with people's security um, and their privacy and ensuring that, you know, when you're working with private data, it's, it's complying and there's standards and regulations. So these are the pillars that this team might work um, and have conversations on day to day on a daily basis as they're deciding on new work. Slack's ones, um, they, they, I love their use of emojis, by the way. Empathy, courtesy, thriving, craftsmanship, playfulness, solidarity, their, um, their thriving ones speak to how their, their work culture actually um, it plays out day to day, talking about their health and wellness and their learning and development pathways and how they really celebrate that. Um, having happier weekdays, note less meetings. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is the stuff that you can really kind of 
um, anchor to because they exist currently in your companies. And if they don't, I say start the conversation about it, you know, really talk about what those values are. Um, and you can have, and this is one of your, you know, your Melbourne locals, Melbournians, um, you can, you know, you have conversations around if um, ethics and environmental um, footprint is a huge part of your organisation's values, then you can have this conversation about performance. Uh, this, this is something that, you know, it's, it's a conversation that we should definitely be having because we are wanting to have a better world for all of us out there. And it also helps you map it through in, in a alongside roadmap work, if you're talking in a product sense or if you're talking in a an agency sense where you have a waterfall, you know, design, development, delivery process, you can also talk about how you're continuously improving. So how this work that maps up to your values actually delivers alongside in a continuous manner the improvement that you can keep outlaying with the products that you're building, the code that you're touching. And the fifth part of the preparation mode is knowing your audience. Who are you pitching to? Um, is it, you know, is it your manager or are you pitching to your team? If it's your manager that is the decision maker, um, then actually getting into their heads into their minds, into their souls. <laughs> no, um, getting into their shoes probably, uh, just understanding what drives them, what motivates them enough to actually persuade them to make a change or to sign off or to go in and bat for you because sometimes your manager isn't the decision maker. Sometimes they have to go in and rally on your behalf to the CEO or a board or shareholders or stakeholders. So kind of putting yourself in that situation of what is it that can help convince them through what's important to them and what they're trying to get out of their role and being empathetic to that um, means that you can then go, okay, well, what could a potential blocker be? What would block them from saying yes to this proposal? If we are talking about remote working days um, and getting that over the line, what, you know, what do they need to hear to actually go, okay, I can make this work. I can, I can speak to management to make this work because of these benefits, but they might say X. So kind of getting in that, that playing field, um, rather than, you know, a, um, rather than is it, you know, is it just about me to the manager? Because they might need to go in and have that conversation on your behalf. So how might we be able to equip them with the knowledge that they need, with the type of uh, dialogue that they need to be having with that that management kind of table as well. What else have we got here? Yep. Okay. So this is an extract about your boss may use. I'm actually going to read it out. Here we go. Your boss may not care about the fact that it will make your commute less stressful. This is kind of talking about remote working, but she will care about um, care if you explain that you can start working an hour earlier or that you can get work done faster because you will be less interrupted. So that's just such a simple, um, just a, a simple reframe. And it, it does seem really basic, but it matters um, because you're equipping based on understanding where they're coming from. Like, you know, that care factor, what's important to them. So instead of saying something like a design system will make things easier for me or that, you know, I've always wanted to work on one and great, love, love to have that happen. Perhaps reframing, just such a subtle shift, but a design system could, will, perhaps, help our team move faster and reduce waste. As an example, so remembering back to us building the evidence, getting people on board, so informing them and bringing your team along on this journey and getting them equipped with the knowledge of how something like this could actually help workflows, something like this could help efficiencies, could reduce tech debt, all of these, you know, positives, but getting them along on this journey rather than going, boom, I want a design system, you want a design system, have the design system for you. Um, yeah, so again, instead of remote working, um, or remote working will make me happy or happier, perhaps try, remote work could result in, insert number here, 10 perhaps more hours of productivity per person in the team per week. 
Hey, those numbers could literally add up. Um, that's, you know, that becomes a, uh, a number that managers can then revolve around um, and rally around going, okay, well, we're looking at productivity here. We're looking at, um, you know, potential more efficiencies. We're looking at um, improved workflows and, you know, improved happiness amongst the team. Perhaps it's, it's a conversation starter. Perhaps instead of, you know, an accessible website is good. Well, that was really creative of me, wasn't it? <laughs> an accessible website is good. Um, try. An accessible website could bring in 20% more traffic um, and avoid a lawsuit. Win-win. <laughs> Great. Um, you know, being that one in five Australians have a disability. So that's 20% of an audience that's completely untapped and not being engaged with um, if your website doesn't meet accessibility standards. So that's a conversation that you can rally around and something that people might not have known or been um, privy to in the past because everyone's got their, you know, they've got their things. You've got, everyone's got a day job, mostly. People have day jobs. Um, so they've got their things that they're focused on and their KPIs and their OKRs, and I'm just going to keep throwing acronyms at you until you hum me off the stage. <laughs> um, but let's continue on cooking because... Let's bring it all together with the method. So back, going back to the recipe, we had our ingredients, you know, we're grit, determination, resilience, and, you know, we want this good, good stuff to happen. I was going to swear there. I didn't. <laughs> um, and then we went through preparation and actually going, okay, what do we need to make this all work? Uh, and now going into the method of how we all pull, pull this together to then deliver it. So... This is um, really straightforward, but let's set the tone of just, you know, reminding how we might actually, reminding you all how we might actually pull this together. We start with the small wins. Let's build up that trust. If you're new to the team, probably don't come in guns blazing and just going, I want to change everything and y'all are silly billies. <laughs> um, and, you know, let's, let's do this good stuff because I know that this exists and I know that we can improve and I know that we can be better. Cool. Maybe just start with the small things because incrementally, let's take access, as, as accessibility as an example. You can actually increment towards this. Start with looking at the code base, semantic code, headings, content. Um, and these are just small little things that if you track along and go, okay, this is actually changing a benchmark, a score line. You can actually keep score of these kind of things, plus being able to deliver on the things that you have been employed to do. Building that trust of going, okay, this person is reliable and they know their stuff. Didn't swear again. Hey, you're going to get lots of inner monologue from me. That's just what I do. It's probably not great. But anyway, anyway, so we're building trust. Um, you're acting and then you're pitching the case. And again, knowing your audience, are you going informal, formal? Do you need to prepare a, a pitch deck? Does your boss's 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 boss need a, a full slide deck? Do they, do they need takeaways? Do they, or do they just need, you know, like a, a quick chat in, um, in the hallway and you just pin them against the wall and say, we're going to do accessibility stuff like that. Um, you know, any of these things, like, so know, know who you're speaking to, know what actually is driving them and important to them. And if they don't have time to sit down and go through a whole pitch deck and presentation, then be aware of that and go, you know what, I'm just going to put little subliminal messages and start printing out massive signs on the wall saying that one out of five people have an accessibility, that kind of stuff. Um, handle it like an advertising agency. Just have billboards everywhere. Uh, Remarket them. Get the ads to follow them. Hey, there we go. Yeah, remarket to your bosses. It's a good idea. Um, and yeah, go forth and do the good stuff. So yeah, you know, there's a all, all, also this hero effect um, that leads to your your opinions being more more valuable because you're 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 trustworthy um, and you're a reliable team member. This is real stuff that exists. The results of you being noticed for this ongoing work that you do will mean that you'll have more grace, you'll have more forgiveness and you'll have more leeway when someone says, what should we do next, person? Um, and you go, we should do the good stuff. And they'll go, okay, we did it. We did it. Doggo with a smoothie, voila, so good. But... There's always a but. 
Ah, okay. So you've gotten through all of this process, you've done your pitch, you've, you know, you're like, yeah, I nailed it. I know my audience. I, I have, I've built this great relationship. I'm trustworthy. And you've ticked all these boxes and you've made this great recipe, recipe and the souffle. Everyone, does everyone know what a souffle is? Okay. It didn't rice. <laughs> That's a big sad, sad poo emoji for that. Um, souffle not rising. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, it's it's not great, you know. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. This is, um, this is building our resilience. This is building our grit and de- determination to keep fighting the good fight. Um, look, sometimes the timing isn't right. Sometimes, literally, there's just not enough money to invest in this. Um, I say, just keep going, keep trying, keep doing. Aligning with the values that you've set out and gone, yeah, I've identified these are the company values and these are the ways that we can continuously improve. This is how we can continuously move the needle on things like performance. This is how we can continuously actually make sure that we are maintaining a healthy and secure product. These are the things that I'm doing with my paw print to affect and have a positive change in the world because I'm working in it. Um, and I can make a difference. And this team, I don't know if you all have seen this tweet, it's been um, been shared around a little bit, Um, but this team actually, interestingly, um, went ahead and they did just do it. They did not have buy-in at all to build build this product, um, unfortunately, but they wrote about it and, uh, well, they did it and then they wrote about it um, and... The, the writing that they actually went ahead with doing, this is um, Justin Statch, um, the writing that they did was actually based on the research and the case that they had built to get to this point. Um, the sad thing is that they were on the verge of quitting and they had nothing to lose and they just kind of went rogue into this squad and went, we're going to do some good stuff. And these are the, this is the standard that we accept and this is our final footprint and paw print. The sad thing for the company is they've all moved on now. Um, They've got great reviews and great feedback with their product, um, but all in the meanwhile, they were told this wasn't a priority. So they went ahead and did it anyway. Um, I'm going to, I mean, it's it's being recorded, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, I'm pretty going to, I'm going to categorically say that you very highly likely not get fired if you are doing your job and doing some good stuff as well. I mean, don't quote me on it. Um, If you get fired, well, I'm sorry, but do it anyway because it's so good. It's good stuff. Um, But we're kind of going along this, the campsite campsite rule, um, you know, the thought, that train of thought. Leave things in a better state than you found them. If you're working on a product, if you're working in a code base, if you're having conversations day-to-day with your team and they're burning out, wellness isn't considered, then bloody just get in there and change it up. Um, Make it better. All of these things, and we know that they're the good stuff, so let's just just get them happening. And if you ever need a point, ever need help with a case being made for any of these areas, just... Find me on Twitter, and I'm more than happy to help walk you through these processes. I've seen um, great wins happen in the past, and I've also seen some, you know, pool emojis of that just wasn't invested in. But that's okay. We can pivot. You know, we're really flexible with this kind of stuff, adaptable, and we're very resilient, you know, so we're we've, we've prepared for this. So that's okay. Um, if all else fails, play the consultant card. Uh, get a consultant to come in and say, say the exact same thing of what you were saying um, <laughs> and it will likely proceed. Um, try not to play that one, though. We can, we can do this together. Uh, but, um, yeah, otherwise just do what you want. I mean, you're the custodian of the product. You're part of this team that is building out, um, you know, something that people are using, people are consuming, people, you know, people. So we're doing, we're doing it for a bigger cause than it's just, you know, for the fun of it. Um, so I'll leave you with 
please now go forth and do the good stuff. Um, there's some further reading links there, which I'll share in my slide deck, um, or you can take a photo if you'd like to. But some great talks to look up. Um, yeah, so from Chris and Carolina, Campsite Rule and Towards a Welcoming Web, both great talks to kind of just really stoke that fire and get you cooking. And that's, that's me. Thanks for listening. Get back!